Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Grafana community call. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you who were in the, the community call, uh, I think two months ago, when we talked about uh, plugin signing and how that is going to be something that we're doing going forward where uh, every plugin that is published now will have to be signed. And of course, that uh, is not obvious what that means. So uh, I would like to spend this uh, call to you know, walk through what, uh, what that means um, and how to do it, basically. So uh, let's see if I can uh, open up the tabs again. So to start off with, there is some documentation on this. Uh, so if you go to uh, Grafana, I'll post these links in the, um, in the chat as, as soon as I, I get them. Um, bup, bup. So we do have a documentation page here. Uh, I, I posted it in the chat. Uh, so that's uh, how, you sign a plugin, and we're also going to look at how to package a plugin that you can find here as well. So I was thinking that we could walk through how to do uh, these two tasks. Um, and I'm going to use a, uh, a plugin of mine. So uh, let's see if I can share my screen. Uh, Hope you can all see my 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 Chrome tab or Chrome browser right now. Uh, so I have. Uh, if you go to GitHub.com, Marcus Olson, I have a few uh, plugins uh, on my account that are all signed and packaged uh, according to the documentation. So if you have. You know, if you want to look at examples of, of what it looks like when you're done, uh, feel free to check them out. Uh, I'm going to make uh, a signed and packaged uh, plugin out of this JSON API data source. So the first thing that we want to do is that we looking at this uh, package a plugin documentation page, uh, we see that we need to build it. Uh, so I'm going to open up, Let's see if I can, can share my uh, VS code here for you. Um, so you should be seeing my VS code window here. Uh, if not, then let me know. So uh, I have my plugins here. Um, let's remove this one for now uh, because I, I ran this already. So right, let's say that you have uh, a GitHub repository already. Um, you don't have to, uh, to do this, but if you want to publish on grafana.com, you will have to have a uh, uh, a uh, public repository with this. Uh, and the first thing we'll need to do is that we need to build our plugin. So the first thing is, you know, yarn build. Uh, what happens is when, when you run this command, yarn build, is that it starts uh, building your front end assets. Um, and uh, when we do that, eventually it's going to create a little directory in our uh, plugin directory, uh, which is called dist. And to those of you who have been developing plugins in the past, you know that this is something you would have to check into uh, GitHub and uh, we would need that, uh, the commit uh, of that dist, you know, um, the, the commit SHA of that uh, dist folder. Uh, this is not, this is something that you don't need to do anymore. So uh, you won't ever need to check in your disk directory again. Uh, I know there's uh, a lot of you who are excited about that because it's uh, something that has been error prone in the past. So when you build your plugin, you end up with this disk directory. 
with uh, all the uh, built front end assets with a bunch of uh, other things like your readme and your images and your plugin.json file. So uh, when you want to sign your plugin, uh, then you need to go through a few steps. So if you look in the, the sign a plugin documentation, uh, you see that they uh, differ a little bit uh, between whether you want to sign a public plugin or you want to sign a private plugin. So today we'll walk through how to sign a public uh, plugin, uh, but hopefully uh, the, the documentation for private plugins shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it's really only one flag that, uh, that changes. But the first thing you need to do is that you need to request a plugin signature level. And a signature level is uh, one of three. Either it's a private plugin, it's a community plugin, or it's a commercial plugin. So if you have a, a subscription, a plugin subscription with Grafana uh, Labs, then that should already be fixed for you. Um, but if you are interested in getting one of those, then uh, please, um, uh, you know, uh, send an email to the address in the um, in the documentation. I, I believe it's plugins at grafana.com. Uh, if you wish to start developing a community plugin, uh, send an email to uh, pl uh, plugins at grafana.com, uh, telling us what what plugin ID you want to start signing, and uh, you know, that it's the community signature level uh, if you wish to publish this on grafana.com. Um, so in this case, I'm going to sign a community plugin. Uh, I've already set a signature level for this. So the next step is that I want to, uh, you know, log in to uh, grafana.com and I want to create an API key. And if you log in uh, to grafana.com, and to the left in the sidebar, you will see uh, a section that says API keys. And if you click that, there will pop up a little button to the right that says add API key. And once you do that, you will have a little uh, a window pop up that will ask you to name it. And it's important that in that little uh, dropdown that you will see there, uh, I'm not sure if you're all uh, logging in and trying this yourself uh, right now, but then you will have a little dropdown that says role and make sure to select plugin publisher from that uh, dropdown um, and create a new API key. Uh, so let's see if we can, uh, did, did, I think we can um, do that right now. Uh, so, Let's see if I can start a new share here. There we go. So if I go to grafana.com, my account, in, in the sidebar here, you have API keys. Click that. Click Add API Key. Um, Grafana Publisher or something like that. Uh, you know, uh, and then set a plugin publisher and then create API key. So this uh, we'll need when we start signing our plugin. So uh, let's see if I can da, 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 go back to just do the code here and I will export this. Uh, like that, and I will run a command that is uh, plugin colon sign. And when I do this, uh, it should say sign successfully. Uh, I want you to know that I'm deleting the API key right now. So if we do this again, or <laughs> so you're not, um, uh, yeah, so, so this won't work again. But uh, so when you're watching this uh, in the recording of this, uh, this API key will no be no more. Uh, but yeah, so it's signed successfully. Uh, what happened now is that we now see another file in our disk directory, which is manifest.txt. 
and it contains a bunch of information here. Uh, the most interesting part is perhaps the files uh, section here, which contains uh, um, hashes for all the files in that this directory. And uh, so uh, this is basically a list of all the, the, the files that you've you've uh, confirmed is part of your plugin. So if someone tries to load your plugin, but while it contains anything else in this, or if the file uh, differs from what is currently in the, the, the manifest, then Grafana will complain and says that uh, this signature is, has been modified and we won't load it. So, so that's basically the manifest. Ideally, you don't have to uh, really care about this that much. Uh, you should just run the plugin sign command. And uh, so that's really all there is to signing. Uh, the next step is to package this plugin, uh, which is basically taking this disk directory and moving it to a directory or renaming the directory to uh, the, uh, the ID of that plugin. So in my case, that's Marcus Olson, JSON data source. Uh, if I do that, uh, I can then uh, archive this by uh, creating a zip file. It's called 062.zip. And then uh, we're going to take the directory that we just uh, um, created. Uh, renamed and then uh, minus R to start uh, doing this recursively. So that has created now a zip archive uh, containing the contents of the disk directory. And that is your package plugin. You can now start dis distributing this uh, zip archive to your users. And preferably, you would also publish it to grafana.com. And uh, if you have a public GitHub repository, I recommend that you create a GitHub release and then upload the zip file as a release asset. Uh, well, let me show you how that could look like. Um, I'm gonna see if I can share my browser again. So what, what I've done here is that I've created a, a, my past release, uh, 061, uh, has a zip file here that was created just the way I showed you. It also has a MD file uh, checksum for, for um, uh, so when, when you submit your plugin to the plugin uh, repository for publishing it to grafana.com, we also are gonna need your, uh, the checksum of that zip archive. So we know that we're, we're uploading the right one. Uh, and that's really it. Um, when you have that, you can go to, uh, and some of you are already uh, are familiar with this process, but you can go to the Grafana plugin repository. And uh, in this repository, there is a file called repo.json. And to that file, you should add, if this is a new plugin, you should add this file called, um, uh, or sorry, you, you should add a new entry to the file uh, that looks something like this. Uh, so in this uh, URL field here, you paste, the URL to your zip file, and then the MD5 checksum that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then you create a pull request. And what happens is that uh, one of us is going to start looking and reviewing your plugin. We will install it. We will do some smoke testing. We will see that uh, the readme works, the, the, the logos are showing the way they are. Uh, you know, nothing is breaking. Um, so uh, let's see if, yeah. Um, so that's basically what we're doing when we when you submit a a uh, plugin to the plugin repository, and 
One other thing that I wanted to mention is that once you have that, this zip file, this hosted zip file, then you can go to this plugin validator and you can find the link in the, the, the readme for the GitHub, uh, the, the plugin repository on GitHub. So if I click that, I come to this page where I can uh, just paste the URL to my zip file. And if I press enter, then we are do validating that, uh, that plugin archive uh, to make sure that it's, it's packaged uh, the way it should. We can see now that there's a few broken links in my readme. I should fix those. Um, and uh, uh, it will also make sure that the, the, the structure of the package, package plugin is correct, that it has a correct signature, uh, and a few other things. So uh, make sure that um, this is shown green, uh, because otherwise we won't be able to publish it. So that's really all there is to you know, uh, signing and packaging and uh, publishing a plugin on grafana.com. Is there anything I've missed so far that you feel like you don't really understand so far? I will open up to questions now. Can you elaborate a little bit more about private plugins? So yes. you have to specify a root URL, right? And it's, yes. it's, it will be comma separated URLs so if I want to have this plugin on three different Grafanas, I have to specify them right in the URL. Yep. What happened if uh, one of the Grafana won't be there? It will be unsigned? Oh, that's them? a good question. I, I don't actually... Daniel, do, do you know what happens if... I think Daniel is... Uh, yeah, I'm here. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I didn't have my headset connected. Uh, <laughs> Uh, mm, so I suppose it depends on what type of plugin it is. If it's a, like a panel plugin, then it'll be unsigned, I think. And if it's a backend plugin, then it won't run. Yes, it's, it's, it's private. Right? Yeah. Okay, so it's going to skip it, right? Unless it's in developer mode. Yeah, if it's in developer mode, then it'll work. Yeah. Um, uh, if it's if it's a, 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 a data source with a backend component then um, uh, yeah, you, you, your Grafana won't start. It'll say it's an unsigned plugin. Um, and if it's a front-end plugin, then uh, you get like an unsigned uh, flag in, in, in the Grafana UI. Do you have any timeline when you're going to not accept unsigned plugins anymore or release target? Um, I think it will probably be June next year. Uh, for okay. 8.0, so for the next major release. So uh, by accept, you mean uh, load in Grafana, right? Yes. Yes, because uh, uh, we had a question earlier on uh, whether you're still whether we're still open to reviewing and publishing unsigned plugins. And to to that, the question is no. We're not going to review any unsigned plugins at this point, but we will still load unsigned plugins. Uh, until what did you say, Daniel? Do you uh, that that's uh, not set in stone. Maybe we'll push out even further. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You have a question in the chat, Marcus. Uh, uh, so there's a, a question on Verta Media. Uh, on Eugene, uh, I published it. So I have on my. So it looks like. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Are you logged into your Verta Media organization, Eugene? Um, I'm not sure if you if you can still around. Uh, but yeah, so it's... guys, uh, no, I uh, log it in my personal account. But previously, I published it, uh, our plugin uh, via pull request only, and I don't think I have uh, account which uh, w which was assigned with uh, uh, readme uh, page on grafana.com uh, slash plugins. Mm -hmm. So I. I need uh, more information about uh, how I can assign 
my account to uh, current uh, Verta Media plugin. So uh, I, yeah, I I I don't know uh, about Verta Media uh, specifically, but uh, if you're you want to uh, you know use your personal account, I believe you have to be part of the the Verta Media organization. Uh, no, you know, you... currently, currently, uh, currently, uh, Clickhouse Grafana data source plugin, it's uh, open source community maintained, and it's, uh, I just uh, currently personal maintainer of this mm -hmm. plugin, yeah. and uh, so, so yes, it's just published. Version... Yeah, there is a version media or organization, I think, that I created when I published it, so oh. uh, we just need to add you as a member to that organization, that's all. Yeah. Uh, we can we can do that. Okay, Daniel. Okay, uh, how I can communicate with you uh, via maybe via GitHub uh, issues? Um, yes, you can do that. Uh, uh, I think you just need to know your uh, Grafana username uh, that you have, like a, a, a Grafana yeah, username. We can, we can, we can. Uh, do do you mean? Or sorry. Uh, your grafana.com if you have a like an org okay name, okay okay, okay, yeah. okay i will send it to you yep awesome uh, so we have another question uh when requesting a signature level from plugins should i also include a plugin id uh yes uh so we need the the id of the plugin that you intend to sign uh as well as the level that you intend to sign it uh under so that are the two uh, things we need. We also need you to have a grafana.com account. Um, so, uh, and the, the, the account, uh, you know, so, so if you've published uh, plugins uh, in the past, you know that the, the first part of your plugin ID uh, is the organization that owns the plugin. So uh, that plugin needs to, to be, needs to exist as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can a single API key uh, be used to assign multiple plugins? I believe yes. Uh, I, I believe that uh, if you have a single organization, you can create one API key and sign the plugins in that organization. Uh, for private plugins, what information gets sent to Grafana for signing? Do you intend to allow enterprise customers to act as their own signing authority? Uh, Dan Daniel, do you want to you want to take that one? Um, I, yeah, go. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what uh, information that gets sent, but I I could look that up for you. Could, I think it's just the 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 manifest, isn't it? It's not no no source code or anything is sent. Um, that that sounds uh, reasonable. So yeah, so so there's going to be information about uh, you know the files in your plugin, uh, the file names rather, uh, for example. Uh, so the time uh, version, uh, plugin ID, um, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, whether we intend to allow enterprise customers to act on their own signing authority as their own signing authority, I don't believe we have those plans, but Daniel, correct me if I'm wrong. We haven't really been discussing that so far. Uh, no, not so far. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we can definitely talk more about that. So if you want to dive deeper into uh, what that would, how, how we could enable that. Mm -hmm. Uh, are there any rate limits for the signing API? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I assume there is, but I think it's probably more than you need. Uh, is there a reason you're asking? Do you intend to sign a lot? <laughs> yeah. So no, I I don't think you have to worry about rate limits. Um, Yes, you, you can totally, oh, good, uh, good point. I think I, I missed uh, showing you that earlier. Um, you can totally sign your, your every build if you want to. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I can show you uh, something that I'm using for my own plugins. So 
I am working on a GitHub action. Um, so if you go to uh, one of my, uh, my plugins here, uh, there is a directory called GitHub workflows. If you look at that, there's a main.yaml file uh, in there that is basically doing all the things that I showed you earlier. Uh, so yarn build, uh, yarn, um, uh, plugin sign, you know, it's using the Grafana API from, as a secret in the repository. Uh, it's extracting some information. Uh, it's creating a zip archive, just the way I showed you, creating the MD5 sum. And then it creates a GitHub release and uploads the zip archive as a, re a release asset to that. So uh, the only thing I have to do to uh, package, sign and package uh, is to uh, push a tag to this repository. And what you will have then is something like this. If we check this out, then you see that you have a bunch of steps here. And in the end, uh, there is a step right now where if you expand this publish to grafana.com, you can f get the, the, the entry that you should um, add to the repo.json file. So it's just uh, handy that way. Uh, I, I will work on uh, improving this and hopefully we can get this published to the GitHub marketplace at some point. I know Mikhail, you, you've done some improvements to this for, uh, for backend plugins that I hope that we can uh, start incorporating as well. Um, yes, it's important, it's important right? To yes. have a sign and do the mage. Yes. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't yet have any, uh, personal backend, uh, plugin, so I haven't, uh, integrated that for myself yet, but, uh, we will definitely look at that, uh, for an official GitHub action. So if, if you're, uh, maintaining a community plugin on GitHub, you definitely want to look uh, into this. Uh, you can use this, um, GitHub workflow as is. Uh, if you're not uh, maintaining, uh, maintaining a backend plugin. I believe the Redis uh, repository has an example of, is that correct, Mikhail? Uh, of, Redis, uh, Redis data source, it yeah. has a backend. Yeah, action. so you can look at that one as well. But it's almost the same as yours, it just has this mage step. Yeah. And then the Google dependency, Go, Golang dependency, because you need to install them and run mage. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty easy. But it's very convenient, actually. You can do it as a CI pipeline. So when you're ready to do the release, right, you just publish it. It's great. The only problem is that when you actually publish the release with it, um, it's published, uh, there is no description, proper description. So everybody who signed to your repository get notified there is a new release, but uh, the description is empty kind of it's new release you don't know what the features are yeah so it's something maybe we can improve yeah that that's that's a good point i've just been adding it to the description description after the fact but yeah we should maybe i mean automatically right. create a change log or something like that i don't know could be worth looking into yeah change log or maybe if you have a draft it can look if there is a draft already and use that yeah. because i mean everybody if you have 100 stars or more right a thousand stars everybody will get notified this is new release and they will have no idea what it is yeah good point yeah. um yeah but yeah uh, keep working on that yeah go on okay just let us know when you're ready so we can test with it I, I have actually another question about grafana roadmap is it something you can share with the community because there is a release is coming. Some of them was not stable, like uh, but yeah, recent one, 731, 732, with this issue with the stats. So because uh, we started to use it in production, already as data source and the Grafana in, in different instances. I just want to know if there is like a, a roadmap we can adjust to and uh, publish the plugins using the newest versions and just have some upgrade strategy as well. Marcus. Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is, we're working on the uh, roadmap right now for Grafana 8. Um, so yeah, hopefully publishing that in the next week or two. Um, I think you're looking for something more specific, just around the, the, the plugins, not like generally for all of Grafana. Is, is that right? I'm, lo I'm looking for the Grafana, uh, 
Yes, like Grafana roadmap that in a month we'll have this version 7.3, right? 7.33. After that, we'll do 7.4 or 7.5, and then we'll do like version 8. So we can we will know what to expect. Yeah, so I think we won't be doing it on that level. So 7.33 is a patch release. So that is much more like depends on what, which bugs show up and uh, that get reported. So it's, it's very ad hoc. Um, and the process there is that once we have enough uh bugs and or we have enough serious bugs if we have one serious bug then we, then we do a patch release um and we, we try to do as few patch releases as possible um uh and then i think yeah we, we will do it a sort of at a higher level for for the 704 release which is going to be in the start of february and then uh there might not be any more more releases for 8.0 so that would be like in may june we'll see there might there might be a 7.5 um but uh, yeah, the, 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 it, it's, it's almost uh, decided, um, but it won't, it won't be super detailed. It's, it's more like uh, it'll be about uh, you know, 20 or 30 uh, sort of headline features that we're working on. But is it going to be official roadmap with kind of sprints, date, anything for um, us? <laughs> so uh, I suppose we have a, an official uh, roadmap. If you look at our, so there are products as so for, for open source Grafana, we try and keep it sort of general because uh, because it's open source, so things right. turn up. Uh, so having sprints and things is really hard to keep if you're thinking like who knows like what which external PR will come in. So uh, at the high level, yes, we we we, will, we do know what's going to go into seven or four and what's going to go into eight or zero. Um, but at the low level, it's uh, it, um, it changes a lot over a few months. Okay. I mean, we kind of have the same strategy for Redis. I mean, you never know what is going to be there. But still, because uh, we as the developers, we invest a lot of time in these plugins and they already started to use. So I just want to know what releases have to test and uh, kind of adjust my time, right, with your new releases. Yeah, so there, there is like the, the very low level planning is there. If you look at the, the milestones in GitHub, I mean, we, we are, we live in GitHub. That's where everything is. Okay. Um, I think the problem is that that is not that useful to someone who's not working on Grafana. It's so low level, it's hard to see the the, the forest for the trees, uh, which is why I'd like to provide something that's a bit more high level so you you, you know what's what's actually planned rather than, you know, a, a feature might be 20 pull, pull requests. It's very hard to see see that when you're looking at a change log, for example, or looking at a, a milestone. Okay, makes sense. I have another uh, question about application plugin. When is going to be ready? The new application tutorial. Yeah, um, I, it's it's still in process. Uh, it's been paused uh, in favor of a plugin signing. Um, unfortunately, I hope to uh, continue working on it in the coming um, couple of weeks. I hope. Um, we do have some pro uh, progress on the uh, starter repository. So we, uh, I know that the, one of our teams have been working on improving that a bit. So you should have seen some, some changes to that repository. Uh, I think that you have the link to it already. If not, I can just add it to the yeah, chat. I have, I have it. Uh, so there are some changes being made there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, no real progress since last time we talked, unfortunately. Um, Okay. And there should be some migration tutorial as well. <laughs> How to migrate from old one from Angular to React. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, see if we can, we can um, add something to the, the migration guide that we have already. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, I have a question about signing. Uh, mm -hmm. Last week, I tried to sign a plugin which I already published to Grafana, uh, which uh, worked uh, quite easily. I got signed successful. But uh, the thing is, a couple of days ago, I tried Infinity Panel signing, but it is failing. As I'm thinking it's a private plugin. So, what should be done? So, uh, is the, the Infinity is not yet published, right? It's a new yes, plugin. Not, yeah. Not yet published. Yeah. So, uh, you will have to, uh, I can actually do it uh, for you uh, right after this call. I can, uh, so whenever you, uh, whenever you create a new plugin that you wanna publish, you need to request the, the signature level that I mentioned earlier. 
So we need to set whether it's a private, is a community or a, a commercial plugin. In your case, it's a community plugin. And the reason why uh, your previous plugin is working is because we've uh, we've already set all uh, already published plugins to have the community level. All right. Yeah, but uh, I I can I know the plugin that you're referring to, so I can just add that um, right after this call. It should work. sure. Marcus. That's much appreciated. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, question from Yvonne, uh, question about compatibility. Should I keep this folder in repo for new releases so that version 6.7 and earlier may can install plugin by app? So uh, you should be able to, um, so I think it should work as uh, if, if you start uh, packaging the, your plugin just the way it was. Uh, it should work. Um, if not, uh, then let me know because uh, I would want to know that. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to be any issue with backward compatibility there. Uh, Daniel, do you foresee any issues there? Uh... Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mike. Sorry, yeah, we mute. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, about comp compatibility. No, I think I think it, it, it's fine. I think just that we yeah. won't require it uh, later on. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. So you should never have to uh, uh, keep the disk folder uh, going forward. Um, and and again, if uh, 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 if, if you're encountering, uh, yeah, go on. Um, there was a practice uh, to keep this folder in uh, separate branches. Uh, yes. So uh, I can uh, I can uh, I can use this practice. Uh, so we uh, going forward, we don't actually care uh, because uh, <laughs> to publish a plugin, uh, we only need the the packaged SIP uh, archive. That's the only thing that we need from you. So if you want to keep the disk directory, by all means do so. But uh, yeah, uh, not for our sake. And earlier versions, do I, they know about zip archives? So earlier versions, so when, uh, when you submitted a plugin before, then uh, when we accepted and published it, we actually packaged this uh, and we're storing your package plugin uh, on in the cloud uh, in a bucket. Uh, so if you change uh, to not contain your dist, uh, that's not going to be an issue for people that already are installing through okay. Grafana.com. Okay, so nothing changes. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But again, if you're encountering issues with this, let me know and uh, I'll get right on it. Yes, okay. Marcus, do we need to sign the existing versions published? Uh, no. Um, so you don't need to sign the, 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 the versions that have already been published. Um, of course, they will be listed as unsigned uh, in future versions of, of Rufana. So uh, please encourage your users to upgrade to the, the signed version. Uh, we are working on a script to, uh, you know, to um, to sign plugins in the, from the that has already been, um, you know, plugins that have already been published in the past, because there is a lot of publics that uh, plugins that have been used, you know, by uh, for for people by, uh, for many years, but they're not being actively maintained, and the 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 plugin author has, you know, not touched that plugin in many years. Uh, and we, of course, we want to make sure that people can still uh, use, uh, you know, their their favorite plugins. Uh, so for for those plugins, we are going to, uh, you know, sign and publish a new version. Um, if you don't want us to do that for your plugin, then I mean, let me know. Uh, I think most of you are in here are going to, uh, you know, be publishing 
uh, plugins going forward. I mean, you're actively maintaining a plugin, I, I assume. So you want to be able to handle that yourself. But for a lot of plugins, they're, you know, they're, they don't have an active maintainer. Yeah. Marcus, one more question. So assume if I build a plugin that conflicts against uh, Grafana Stark plugin, will that be signed? Say, for example, I build the Azure plugin or cloud, GCP cloud plugin. Will that be signed and published? Uh, or could, you re, could you repeat your question? I, I didn't quite catch that. Okay, so if if someone built a plugin that uh, direct competition to the Grafana Enterprise plugin or Grafana Stack plugins, will that be signed by Grafana? Uh, I think Daniel, would you mind taking that one? I'm not sure. Because I see lots of people uh, having some equivalent plugins to the community plugin. So. Sorry, I have to repeat that. I was, I was busy trying to help Eugene here. <laughs> so if, if a, a community member wants to publish a, a plugin that competes with a Grafana plugin, uh, will a Grafana Lab still sign that plugin? Yes. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to do like a, a version of either one of our open source or commercial plugins, that was really similar. Um, yes, as, as, long, as long as it's open source. Okay. I think yeah, the, the so example it, here yeah. was the Azure. Uh, oh, that is something we would have to discuss. So I suppose Azure is not, is not an open source service, it's a commercial service. Um, but um, so that, that's in the gray zone. Um, I, I, maybe, it depends on the plugin, I think. So, the thing is, yep. I, I developed a pl plugin for Azure, but uh, Grafana native data source doesn't have those features. So. What should be there? Yeah, um, so it'd be great to collaborate, I suppose, on making the Azure Monitor data source better. Um, and uh, I know we will be dedicating more time to in the in the, in the very near future um, and work together with Microsoft on it. Um, but I think like Azure is huge, so uh, you know if we never intend to, you know, if the features you want to add, you, we're like, yeah, we're never going to add those, and then then maybe we we would publish it. But uh, um, I think the looking at the, the the terms that we have for 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 publishing, like we we uh, are are going to be a bit stricter on um, data sources for for closed source uh, services. Sure, thanks. So it's not not a great answer. It's it's a, it's a maybe. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Do we have any more questions? On uh, you know plugin signing plugins in general or Grafana in general. Um, Do you have any plugins plans for YouTube or Instagram for social media? Uh, what would that plugin do? To get the statistics, like it will be similar to GitHub because all of them provide API, so you can actually you know track the followers. Everything. That's a that's a awesome idea. Uh, I I'm not aware of any uh, efforts like that, uh, unless Daniel knows more than I do. But um, if you're no. curious, then uh, have a go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, don't I, I don't think so. Uh, not, not that I've heard of. I know we do have uh, plans for some commercial plugins. I think for the Grafana team, we have enough things going on. I think we have things like, uh, you know, converting world map to React and, uh, I don't know, lots of other things that I think we would work on first before we, we branch out into even more plugins. Hmm. Okay. okay, because I mean, I started to work with Redis plugins and then many different use cases, actually, instead of creating an application using Angular or other frameworks, you can actually create it using dashboards. So this is what we try to do right now. We put everything in the databases and then create the dashboards actually, which show us this information collecting the data from different CRMs from different systems and have one stop like 360 view for that. So now when I'm doing some other project using social media, I just want to have a dashboard with all the Instagram, YouTube on the same place. So you have this view, like everything, what you do. It will be a great idea. I can, I can maybe I can write it on the free time. Try I'd it. love to review a plugin like that. <laughs> because I, I do uh, with my son I have a new project so I need to this overview like one stop view for everything what's going on 
I think it will be helpful if you can have P pay interest, Instagram, YouTube, other social media as well. Okay, that's good. What about world map? Are you going to uh, world map right now? It's kind of very limited what it can show. It can show with uh, different dots with uh, different colors, right? Uh, are you have any plans to create like connections between them? Uh, yes. So I think the world map was originally built for like a, a, a cloud service we had called WorldPing. Um, okay. So it wasn't uh, as it was originally built as some sort of like general purpose, like does everything. Um, and then we added some features, but uh, yeah, we never had the capacity to actually do it properly. So uh, yes, there are plans, but not like in the very near future. So sometime next year, um, I think we'd like to do a lot more, not, not just on the UI, but also like a, a proper tile map server. Um, and we, I think we move into core uh, Grafana as well, uh, rather than having it as an external plugin. Um, so I don't know, eight, eight dot something, eight dot one, eight dot two, maybe. Okay, it will be a great feature because if you have clusters, you want to show how the traffic going on between them, right? So this is what world map will be really useful for. Sorry, can you say that again? I didn't get that. I mean, the world map right now, it's great is that you can show what happened in different dots of the world, right? Different parts of the world. But if you want to see the uh, like one uh, different servers on the world map, right? And they communicate with each other and they are like replicating the data, for example. So it will be a world map. It will be a great uh, plugin to show this information instead of using maybe flow chart and other plugins. Yeah, I think uh, my flow chart, uh, um... So that's also on the, the backlog is a, is a proper um, uh, weather map uh, panel. Um, so this was for the last two years, the quarantine has been very focused on like the, the anger migration has taken a lot of our resources. Um, so now we're sort of ne nearing the end of that. And, and, and you see that we, we're starting to, for example, break up the, the graph panel into lots of smaller panels. Um, so you see already in 704, I think there will be a new pie chart um uh hopefully a new bar chart panel as well uh a new graph panel and uh like for 8.0 there should be a whole bunch more so over the next couple of say six months six to eight months we should be uh, uh putting a lot, like a lot more as a core visualizations in grafana and lots of them have, have, have always been there they're sort of hidden away in the graph panel so we're going to try and break the graph panel out into multiple visual visualizations um and we made that change where uh, you know, you, now you can pick a visualization type and you can easily switch between them, um, which means that there isn't uh, really any point in having tons of features in, in one uh, panel like we used to have before. Uh, okay. But if you have a lot of panels, we'll introduce your own Grafana panels, some plugins introduce its own custom panels. Is there any need for grouping of the panels? Because at the end, you will end up with uh, so many panels you have to scroll through. Yes, there will. <laughs> uh, and that's also on, on the Grafana 8 uh, roadmap, actually, um, which uh, we're pu publishing soon is, is lots of, uh, so it's actually multiple problems like that. So we also have a problem with, um, you know, if you, uh, uh, with app plugins, if you have too many app plugins uh, installed and they all have an icon, then it gets very weird and funky on the, the Grafana navigation on the nav bar. Um, so we have a ton of small things like that to fix. Okay. Actually, with the icons for application, there is a different types. There is a big, small, but there is this panel icon, right, as well. Maybe it has to be another one, another type of the icon you can use because, I mean, some, some of them may not scale properly. That's a good point. Yes. <laughs> There's so many places. But it's, it's great that you have, you have the progress done with the application as a plugin. Yeah, so, so more, more, to come, more to come on that on, on just apps. I think uh, we, uh, like internally in the company, we have like other teams and not the Grafana team that are building uh, apps now. And, and uh, uh, yeah, we have lots of, lots of features that we want to add. So I suppose we've done a fair amount of work on data source and panel plugins, but app plugins are still mostly the same as they were I don't know, three or four years ago. So th there's lots to do there. So uh, I see Andreas, you had a question about uh, the graph uh, components. I'm not sure if you feel like you had an answer to your question, uh, but to summarize, yes, we, we're going to move to uh, the next next gen graph, but we're also gonna break it apart into um, 
multiple visualizations based on what Daniel just said. Yeah, I think it's going to take a while. So I think the old graph panel, I mean, it's on every single dashboard I think that exists for Grafana. Um, it is going to be super hard to migrate it to new rack ones. I think we'll have to keep it around as, a, as like a legacy panel for, for a long time. Uh, and then maybe have some migration paths for the obvious cases and then the other ones you'd have to manually migrate. Um, but I think yeah, we, it will it will live on for a long time. I'm, I'm afraid, but uh, uh, hopefully the the newer, more focused panels will will will, will be better. And do you, that you can also reuse them in your own plugins, which is not yes. hasn't really been the case before. So now you wouldn't have to re-implement the graph component, um, which I'm sure a lot of you will be <laughs> happy to hear. Um, so also uh, nice. Yeah. Settings. Okay, I have a question. So apart from the data source and panel plugin, is there any roadmap plans for other type of plugins, say like themes or uh, transformations that could be into plugin? I'm gonna leave that to Daniel. Oh, sorry. I had a head from, head, uh, headset problems. I missed totally missed the question. <laughs> what was the question? Do we plan okay. to? Uh, oh yeah, go on. Go ahead, man. Uh, do okay. we plan? Okay, <laughs> let me let me do that. Okay, apart from data source and panel plugin, is there any other uh, plugin roadmap? Like transformation themes. I uh, so the next one will be for uh, I think alert notifiers. Um, but uh, yes, there will be new plugin types. I think not not for eight point zero. I think we're trying to focus on on uh, improving what we have. Um, but after after eight point zero, then 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 yes, there'd be new plugin types It'd be on the on the roadmap. Okay. Um, another comment in the in the chat about uh, the world map plugin uh, uh, and uh, you know publishing a a, a Mapbox panel plugin. Uh, it kind of fills I, I assume the 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 gaps that the world map has right now uh but i'm not sure uh i mean i i don't think i i know exactly what mapbox uh you know what it uh improves on for the for the world map but i don't see any issues with having like multiple uh map uh plugins as well um so uh, happy to see that yeah, you're so you're building one there are already multiple map plugins so yeah um I think if you look at some of them, they are very, like totally different from world map and have a totally different angle on it. So yeah, that's what we will hopefully do is in the future have more uh, map components in the Grafana UI uh, library so that it'll be easier to build them. Well, Box actually, it's an interesting product. They use their own API and their own data. So it's a little bit diff different kind of than, than world map itself which is a really, a really interesting company to work with. I have a question about the stats, uh, stats panel. Uh, is there any plans to support uh, strings there properly? Like um, right now it's allow you to, if it's an, it's a num work mostly with the numbers, right? If the number more than specific number, it can uh, highlight it in different colors. Is there any plans to actually have a regex or the string so you can compare it and then highlight it in different colors? A cool idea. Quite, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I know. I know there's lots of feature requests for it. Um, I think I'd have to ask uh, the, the front end platform team if, if they have any plans. Uh, I know they are. They are working on visual, visualizations generally. So, so, so maybe. Um, I can't okay. say yes or no to that. So should I uh, require uh, look for such issue? Because this is something uh, I, I'm looking for. I need it for my own work. Yeah, look for it, and more, if more not, create it. You know, if you can't find it, create it. Okay. Cool. I think that uh, we're pretty much done here. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, plugin signing or you know plugin development and uh, publishing plugins, uh, let me know. Uh, you can send me an email to marcus.olson at grafana.com. Um, if you have any more questions, 
Uh, you can also, I'm, I'm active in the Slack channel, hashtag plugins. Um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, some of you are already there. Um, but if you're not, uh, that you can ask me questions there as well. So I will say goodbye for now. And uh, I, I'm not sure if there's going to be a community call in December. I think it might coincide with the holidays. So uh, keep, keep, st stay updated. Uh, and uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you all for joining. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.